Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue and to the final build video of this combat robot project. Uh, before I show you how that went, let me actually share some good news. As you can see, I managed to grab a hold of a resin printer. This is a technology that I've always wanted to try and I already started making some highly detailed gribbles with it. I gotta say I'm really impressed with this technology and I already began kind of creating a library of some HD Gribblies that of course I'll use on this project and that are available to my patrons. Uh, the link is on the description box. Now of course the top is ready to go, ready to be painted and it is the waist and the legs that needed some attention. As you can see by this shot right here, the level of detail on them is much lower than the top of the robot. And as I knew that the legs were going to be a real challenge, I actually decided to begin working on the waist. Right there in that spot I decided to make kind of a rectangular hole just so I could add this tiny air vent and of course on the sides I decided to go for a resin printed gribbly. Also while I'm working right here on the front I looked at these two holes that I've included on the original design of the waist and I decided to just cover that because I had no good idea of what to put in there. Now if you're another subscriber to my channel, you know that almost all my robots have a battery pack and this one right here is no different. I was looking at it from the back and it felt a bit empty so I decided to actually go for it using like a couple of these uh, medicine flasks right here. Now of course I needed to find a way to connect uh, both pieces together so I went looking and I found this black gribbly right here which looked amazing and it fitted perfectly. Now the thing uh, with the white plastic is that it doesn't work very well with some CA so I had to go for some epoxy glue which is unusual for the channel but it gave me a very strong bond. I did some sanding on the white plastic to help the primer and of course I had to create an attachment point from the battery pack to the underside of the waist. Now a quick way to create an attachment point that is really strong and reliable is to use some fake Lego pieces and so I did that in this project. Now this is a technique that I kind of forgot about, that I've always used on the past, uh, but recently I found myself kind of going back to it as it is super easy and reliable. Now of course I also had to add an attachment point on the underside of the waist, uh, so right here I'm making kind of an angled slot where I could perfectly fit a Lego square piece as you can see right there, and this right here is the result. Now of course I still needed to make the battery pack look cool and so as I was working with resin on that wick I decided to make some bigger uh, shapes and I glued one to each side of the battery pack. I'm loving how with this resin printer I'm being able to make some simple medicine flasks look amazing and super sci-fi. But yeah, then using a PVC rod, I decided to create sort of a protection rail. So yeah, I bent it to this shape right here, made two holes on the front and it fits right there perfectly. And at that point, the waist was already looking amazing, but I actually decided to go for one extra detail pass. So this is what I did for the next couple of hours. Now this is the waist piece and it sits kind of hidden under the big flat top shape which is of course the most important section of the robot but I had to still put a lot of effort on this piece giving it as much detail as possible while taking care to not overpopulate some areas and hide some important shapes like the roundness of the back for instance. After all that I threw the final coat of primer at the waist and this right here is the result. As I said in the beginning, I knew that the legs were going to be super challenging as it had many segments and moving parts and I really wanted to take it to the next level without necessarily knowing exactly what to add or even where to add things. So I began slow, adding just a few surface details here and there. 
some of these details are the smallest scribblies I can find inside some dead electronics, like these ones right here. But some are some thin 1mm styrene discs that I actually make myself. Uh, let me know in the comments if some tutorial like this would be interesting for you guys. Sometimes when you're lost on a project, you just have to start moving slowly. So after I glued those tiny little discs, I remembered that I had some small 3D printed details that would really work and add to the legs. So I began adding some of those where I felt they worked. As you can see by the plastic organizer, I print those pieces in book. And a cool thing about this design is that they can be cut and used as I need them. You just have to be careful with a snap knife. It wasn't a big deal though, but I think you guys got the idea. I print a bunch of strips in different configurations, some smaller, some bigger, and some longer. And I just cut and glue them where I need. Uh, these really make for some cool industrial looking details. And of course, the SELs are available to my patrons. Right here I'm also adding different types of surface detail, like this purple plastic rivet right there. I just need to drill some holes for it first. And this right here is the result. Now I'm very happy with the level of detail I got going on this lower leg segment, but of course I gotta do the same thing to the other segments. And so yeah, I just decided to power through it. Now I know this might seem trivial, but it actually took me like a couple of days uh, to apply the same level of detail that I did in the lower leg segment to the rest of the leg. Also at this point I decided to take care of the bolts. As you guys know I, I used some M4 bolts and nuts to create the axle points on the legs of my projects. And of course I gotta hide those bolts and nuts and so this is what I'm doing right here using some 3D printed pieces and some acrylic to hide these uh, features. Now of course the only thing I'm missing right here is the final coat of primer on each leg piece and this is what I did next. So now every single piece of this project is finished, detailed and with the final coat of primer and ready to go. Now I'm actually lying because the only thing left to do before starting the painting process is to make the fake chipping effect and for that I need to go and find some red and some black primer. But as you can see the build is pretty much finished. Now this is not the end of the video because of course I gotta make a cool looking base for this project. So off camera I made this 38 centimeters wide uh, disc right here. This is basically some 15 millimeter plywood with a sheet of styrene glued to the top of it. But now of course I don't want this to be like super plain and boring so yeah I gotta detail this base. So right here I'm basically throwing some lines with a marker on the styrene sheet and as you can see I'm making things off center because I think it will look much cooler this way. I'm gluing a roller with some double sided tape to the top, to the base, and I will use this sharp tool right here to create a groove against that roller. You'll see that in a minute. Now let me tell you, if it wasn't for that plastic ruler idea right there, my lines would be much messier. So yeah, I really liked uh, that idea and after a while I just removed the ruler from the top of the base to check the groove I had made and it was very deep and precise. So yeah, I was very happy. Then I moved to the perpendicular line using the same technique but stopping at the middle of the base and after that I decided to throw some lines, some extra lines on the base to plan ahead of the details I wanted to add to it. Like this very good looking resin printed gribbles right here. And here's the thing, I designed those gribbles to be installed on a precise 8mm hole. So I began by making a pilot hole with a 3mm drill bit, then I changed to the 8mm drill bit, carved a hole, a precise hole right there, and just with some CA I could install my resin printed gribbles in place.
then with a one inch spade bit I made a shallow hole right there where I later I installed another resin printed agreeably with some CA glue. At this point of course I was hating the white from the styrene and I decided to throw a coat of primer to be able to see what I had and keep moving forward. That of course was really helpful and helped me decide to actually throw some extra grooves but thinner grooves this time. But I was missing a big detail piece on the base, something to catch the eye of the viewer without of course distracting too much from the robot which is the main piece of this project of course. So I made this big hole right here with a hole saw and hoping to find something to fit right in there and I did just that looking into my collection of cribbies, this very good looking piece right here with some round corners on the inside. I've added an extra grid reel right there in the middle to provide me some surface for yet another resin printed gribbly. God, I'm getting addicted to this one also. But yeah, this right here is the result and as you can see it doesn't stick out of the surface of the base too much, which makes sense in my head. Everything of course received the final coat of primer and I was happy with what I saw. The build is finally done and I can put everything together for the final shots. The biggest challenge right here with a two-legged robot so heavy on the top is the balance. But understanding concepts like center of mass and balance for instance can be easy with this week's video sponsor Brilliant.org. With thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics, Brilliant is a fun and interactive way to learn many topics like logic, engineering and programming. The visuals and the hands-on nature of the lessons can really help you master some big concepts and the bite-sized lessons make it easy for you to build a daily learning habit. And you can take a quick quiz when you sign up, so Brilliant will serve you the content that fits your skill level and needs, like the balance and center of mass lessons I was just taking. Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks and more, with new lessons being added monthly. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days trial, visit brilliant.org slash cut transform glue. The link is in the description box. Even better, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode. God, I'm so happy I'm finally done with the build portion of this project and let me tell you, the pressure I'm already putting on myself for the painting process is very high. As always, high resolution pictures of this robot are available for my patrons on the $3 tier, so check the link in the description box and help me keep going. Thank you so much for your amazing support and of course, thanks for watching.